The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. Um, today, I'm going to be dealing with a particular subject on what in the world is going on with our education system. Um, before we get into that, I uh, want to just talk briefly. I know a lot of our partners and our, our regular viewers have been asking how I'm feeling. Uh, many of you guys know that uh, last week I was diagnosed with uh, COVID. Uh, I'm still in this battle with this and still... Uh, you know, coming out of this thing and going through this thing. So it's an up and up and down battle for sure. Everybody's asking, you know, how the progression of this and that. And today, yesterday was one of my best days. Uh, today's been an okay day, but today uh, is probably the one of the most weirdest symptoms of this. And I know this is nothing new to most of you guys have already had this, but I think for me, this was probably the most bizarre thing. And that was, um, the smell and taste part of that. Uh, I noticed today that uh, I started getting this sensation, this burning chemical like sensation in my nasal cavity. And that's the most bizarre thing. And I, of course, I talked to a couple of people privately that's had this and they said, yeah, that's part of it. And I, and it's almost as if um it's almost like taking it. The only way I can describe it would be like taking some uh, back in when I was in school, we used this whiteout, which was a chemical you could use when you used to uh, write on a uh, with using a pen. You would take this whiteout and you would just cover it up and it would cover it white on the paper. But it was a chemical. But you would smell that and it would be this really strong chemical agent. And it would be like a burning sensation. That is what's going on. And it's really weird because I try to eat some ketchup. And learned real quick that I cannot do that anymore. Uh, so hopefully this is temporary. I know some people, uh, I've got somebody in my family who lost their sense of smell and taste. And it's been a year and a half and they still do not fully have it all the way back yet. So this is crazy stuff. So I'm praying and believing and hoping that that will not be the case. I will. I hope I don't completely lose my sense of taste and smell, but nevertheless, with God's grace, with uh, prayers, and doing what I know to do uh, as far as supplementation, eating right, doing the right things, uh, we're going to get through this thing, and we're going to come out, and to God be the glory. So anyway, so let's get started on this thing, guys. I've got, um, of course, as always, uh, we've got some slides, and I want to pull them up here to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to talk about today, plus I'm going to give you some scripture here. This is in Matthew 18, 1 and 6 for you guys that are listening by podcast that would like to join along with this. This is Matthew 18, 1, 6. For you guys that are watching the visual of this live on Facebook, on Rumble, on YouTube, here's what it says. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them and said, Surely I say unto you, unless you are converted and become as a little as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And therefore, whoever humbles himself as a little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Now listen to verse six. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were to be hung around his neck and to be thrown into the depths of the sea. So we see here that the Lord puts a great emphasis and, and a, a warning on anyone who causes little ones to sin. Uh, in the book of Mark, I believe it's another it's a, a, another one of the synoptic gospels and another angle of this is that if anyone causes his, one of these little ones to stumble, it would be better for him if he tied, tied a millstone around his neck and threw himself into the sea. So it's not just about uh, causing a little one to not believe in Christ, but it's also causing 
uh, one of these little ones or a little child whose senses are not completely matured and they're, they're growing in their understanding, they're growing in their knowledge. The Lord emphasizes here that if we as adults causes one of these little ones to stumble or we expose them to things that could detrimentally harm them, and caused them to stumble down the road, then he tells you here that there's a grave consequence to this. Now, this is the whole backdrop of what we're talking about, because I want to take you into our public education system. There is some crazy stuff going on in our public education system that I want to talk about. And we're just going to give you a few of the headlines that has made headlines over the past two weeks. For example, student test scores, according to a new report, student, student test scores fall for the first time in national test history. Math and reading test scores for the, for the country's 13-year-olds have dropped sharply in comparison to numbers from 2012, with some of the lowest scoring test takers falling the farthest behind. Data, according to the report from The Hill, the data from the National Assessment of Educational Progress showed that while 2020 average scores in reading and mathematics for 13-year-olds marked an improvement from the NAEP's earliest results in the 70s, scores had declined since 2012. U.S. News and World Report reported that this was the first major score drop in the subject since the NAEP began tracking long-term academic achievement trends in the 1970s. According to the report, perhaps even more troubling was the study finding that some of the most significant drops were from students in the lowest performing percentiles. In math, for example, scores drop from a drop for nine-year-olds in the 10th and 25th percentiles, and scores fell for 13-year-olds in the 10th, 25th, and 50th percentiles. Quote, none of these Results are impressive, according to an associate commissioner in the assessment division of the National Center for Education Statistics, said, according to U.S. News and World Report, all of these results are concerning, but the math results were particularly daunting, particularly for 13-year-olds, she added, quote, I asked him to go back and check because I wanted to make sure the results were even accurate. I've been reporting these results for years, for decades, and I've never reported a slide like this. So what's going on? Well, for one, our children apparently are being taught far more than what they should be being taught as far as academics and education. <clears throat> for example, let's just dig into what they're actually being taught. Here's a headline that came out. Uh, parents in California are sue the state of California, to stop chance to Aztec gods in ethnic studies curriculum. According to the report from the Christian Post, parents of studies, or I'm sorry, parents of students, rather, in the California public school system have filed a lawsuit against the state's Department of Education in an attempt to remove a chant to Aztec gods that part of a new ethnic studies curriculum. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, our kids can't do the Pledge of Allegiance. They can't bring a Bible. They can't have prayer. But we're going to have a curriculum where they chant to Aztec gods. According to the report, the lawsuit was filed by the conservative legal firm Thomas More Society on behalf of the Californians for Equal Rights Foundation. Individual taxpayers and parents of current and former students after their August 26th letter to the state superintendent of public instruction demanding withdrawal of the Aztec prayer from the curriculum went unanswered. The lawsuit says the ethnic studies model curriculum has been approved for the Golden State's public schools, which serve approximately 6 million students in some 10,000 schools. So that's a lot of kids being exposed to this. Although the program is reportedly voluntary, many school districts have decided to use the curriculum in their classrooms. 
The curriculum includes a section of affirmation, chants, and energizers, including in like Ick, aff, in, in, in like ick affirmation, I believe that's how, I hope I pronounce that right, which invokes five Aztec deities. What? So again, in this curriculum, these kids are being led into uh, a- affirming or, pr- or evoking, rather, invoking Aztec deities, false gods, idol gods. Again, I want to emphasize, we can't talk about Jesus. We can't pray to Jesus. We can't pray. We can't bring our Bible. We can't even do a pledge of allegiance without intersecting or interjecting God into it because all that's offensive and is separation of church and state. But you know what? It's okay if your kids invoke Aztec deities in the classroom. In the state of California, of course. Although labeled as an affirmation, it addresses the deities both by name and by their traditional titles, recognizes them as sources of power and knowledge, and invokes their assistance and gives thanks to them. In short, quote, it's a prayer, the legal firm said in a statement shared with the Christian Post. Quote, Our clients have both a religious and civic objection to the Aztec prayer, and they do not want their children chanting it. Being being asked or pressured to do so or risking ostracism is uh, if they refuse, said Paul Jonah, partner uh, of the Thomas More Society Special Counsel. I'm going to read just one last paragraph on this, and then we're going to move on. The Aztecs regularly perform gruesome and horrific acts for the sole purpose of pacifying and appeasing the very beings that the prayers from the curriculum invoke. This is unbelievable, guys. <clears throat> the human sacrifice cutting out of human hearts, flaying of victims and wearing their skin are a matter of historical record along with the sacrifices of war prisoners and other repulsive acts and ceremonies the Aztecs conducted to honor their deities. Any form of prayer and glorification of these bloodthirsty beings in whose name horrible atrocities were performed is repulsive to any reasonably informed observer. Again, uh, I mean, this is just, this is mind boggling that this is even an issue. This is even a, a topic of discussion. But again, this is what's going on in your public schools. Then, then we have these headlines. Ready? A high school in Kentucky is under investigation and is still ongoing for an event that took place last week called a man pageant that was riddled with lap dances and hooter outfits. As a result of this, many social media users expressed complete outrage over the event. According to Fox News, a Kentucky school district confirmed it is investigating social media posts of a homecoming event showing male teenagers in skimpy clothing giving lap dances to school staff, including the principal. Now, how would you like your kids to be at that school? Social media posts emerging from Hazard High School in Hazard, Kentucky. Now, guys, listen, I just got to say, I'm, I listen, I lived in Shepherdsville, Kentucky for years. I lived in Bullitt County, Kentucky. I lived in Hardin County, Kentucky. I lived, I lived in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. I'm very familiar with Kentucky, and I am blown away that this happened anywhere in that vicinity of Kentucky. Something like this doesn't sound right to be (coughs) where I lived and grew up with for years. In the social media post, teenage boys were seen giving lap dances to staff members, which has prompted outrage from parents, but not all parents. And we'll talk about that in just a second. The incident is under investigation. And as you know, anything under investigation, I really can't talk about, according to Hazard uh, Independent Superintendent Sandra Combs, who told the Herald Leader, without describing the photos, quote, once the investigation is complete, appropriate action will be taken. The photos were posted 
on the Hazard High School Athletics Facebook page, but have since been removed. Well, if it wasn't that big of a deal, why were they removed? The principal of the school was photographed in the pictures and is also the town's mayor. Guys, you can't even make this stuff up. Other photos of the event showed teenage girls parading around the gym in Hooter waitress costumes. The homecoming event listed to occur on Tuesday on the Hazard High School Facebook page was referred to as a, quote, man pageant. Now, not everyone was outraged. In fact, one mother defended one mother that was interviewed by the Blaze, or the, or I'm sorry, the Blaze reported, she was actually interviewed by local affiliate WLEXTV, and she actually defended the man pageant and was actually annoyed that the story even got out. In other words, she was annoyed that people got offended about it. She was annoyed that people were upset about this situation. She was annoyed that your kids in this particular high school, if they were in this high school, were exposed to this mess. And she went on to even say that, quote, people just don't know how to keep their mouths shut. Unbelievable. Um, let me see if I can read on a little bit more. Quote, she went on to say that, quote, it has been taken completely out of context. Well, what is the context? How could there be any context to this, guys? Quote, there are only photos being shown on the Internet, but no videos. And we all know that that makes it a whole lot more explainable. I mean, if there, if there was videos out there, then this whole thing would be blown over. This whole thing uh, could just we could just all move on and we wouldn't even be talking about this today because it would be totally excusable if there was videos but there's photos and they don't and she went on to say the photos don't show the teachers pushing the children off of them uh she went on to tell wlex local affiliate that pushing the limits and embarrassing teachers is part of the fun it's all in the name of fun guys just calm down I mean, what do you think your kids are going to learn in school anyway? Academics? Education? Learning skills? I mean, come on. Did you really think your kids are going to, I mean, what did you think you signed up for? What do you think you're paying taxes for? Quote, if everybody is perfect, then I would say, yeah, maybe we don't need to rethink something. She went on to say what? Quote, but until somebody can prove that something is going on here other than just homecoming week and teenagers just being teenagers, then I will support my kids. Yeah, I'm sure that's probably what a bunch of people said in California, too, when their kids are being forced to pray to Aztec gods. Well, we know they're really not Aztec gods so why is everybody getting offended? I don't know. Why are you so offended when if my kid brings a Bible in the class? Why are you offended if my kid doesn't pray to all these other deities and all these other gods, but he prays to the name of Jesus? Why do you get offended if he uses under God in the Pledge of Allegiance? You tell me why you're offended at that, and I'll tell you why I'm offended if my kids are exposed to something that I don't agree with. So let's, we got to move on. Then there was a story about Florida educators tying, um, a, a report came out that Florida educators tied a mask to a disabled student's face for six weeks without parental consent. What? Uh, according to the report, the daughter of Jeffrey Steele, Sophia Steele, is nonverbal and has an enlarged tongue, stepped off of the school bus with a mask, wet from her saliva, saliva sorry, tied to her head with a thin nylon string. According to Fox News, she did not leave for school with a mask on that day or any day prior, so Sophia 
has an individual education plan. Educators are supposed to inform parents of any changes made to the children's IEPs, but the school never informed him or his wife that they were going to require Sophia to wear a mask. And no one asked the parents for their consent and trying and tying a mask to her face during school. Unbelievable. Steele emphasized that his daughter's his daughter breathes through her mouth and cannot speak. So wearing a mask is dangerous for her health in more ways than one. But it doesn't matter, guy, because they're going to do what they're going to do and what's best for everybody else. And you just have to just have to comply. According to Ocean Breeze Elementary School in Indian Harbor Beach, it implemented its own mask mandate back in September in defiance of Florida governor's efforts to ban schools from requiring children to wear masks. The student was given a medical mask exemption as soon as the mother made the request to school leadership. The school district, the school district is investigating and is in the process of gathering all the facts. So now I'm going to close with one more story here, guys. And this one is also... Uh, this one is also out of Florida. Let's pull this one up. <laughs> this one, this one is hard to believe too. <clears throat> what is going on in Florida, man? Florida school board member, listen, to, this is almost unbelievable that this happened. Well, I honestly, when when this story took place, I, I promise you, I thought it was straight out of the Babylon B. And I wish that that was the case, but it's not. Florida school board member takes elementary school students on a field trip to a gay bar. And the Broward County school board member even posted photos of the field trip to Facebook. According to the report, a Florida school board member chaperoned a group of elementary school children on a field trip to a gay bar. How's this even legal, guys? Yeah, I mean, since when can we bring elementary kids to a bar, period, regardless if it's a regular bar, or gay bar, or whatever? How's this even legal? I don't even understand this. And, of course, there was photos of the trip was posted to social media. And according to the report, the chaperone said, quote, listen to this. I, this is what, what was said, quote, I was so honored to be invited to chaperone Wilton Manor's Elementary's field trip to the Incredible Rosies, that's the gay bar. The students and I had a fun walk over and learned a, a lot about our community. A huge thank you to Rosie's Bar and Grill for hosting this special field trip every year. Really? So, all of the money that people pay that we pay in school taxes in the state of that you guys pay in the in, you guys the Floridians listen to this of all the locations that you could have come up with for a field trip this is where we end up this is where we came together as a school board meeting and said hey guys anybody got any ideas on where we can take the elementary kids on a field trip this year Oh, so can we take them to Gatorland? Uh, what about Disney? No. Nah. What about a theme park? Uh, what about a tourist attraction? Mm. Oh, I know. What about a gay bar? Oh, that's a great idea. Let me step up and chaperone it. Are you, I mean, this is unbelievable. The post, which was examined by Fox News Thursday morning, shows photos of children in a popular Florida gay bar, Rosie's Bar and Grill, including a photo of the group posing next to the restaurant sign. Uh, screenshots of the posts have since circulated on social media and sparking outrage. Well, obviously, that's from all the hate mongers. I mean... Who would have not agreed to this? Let's, I mean, you guys, you can go to the, go and look this up and you can see all the photos. We're not going to show all these on here for copyrights and whatnot, but you can pull all the pictures up. School board member Sarah Lenardi, Lenardi 
accompanied Wilton Manors Elementary School on a field trip to LGBT bar, which features menu items like the Big Girl Burgers, Rhoda Cowboy, Ivana Hooker. That'll be nice to explain to elementary school kids. Helena Bunn. You know, and I, I don't want to give you the pun on that one. Georgia Blue, Young Ranch Hand, Willie Cheesesteak, a screenshot from a private Facebook group called Moms for Liberty, Broward County, Florida, shows one person saying, quote, the screenshot was posted on the Twitter account, Libs of TikTok. Rosie's Bar website shows these items on the menu, but it's unclear if the children were offered the same menu. Why? I mean, why would they not be? Right? Ah, so we could read on and on and on about this. Uh, but again, unbelievable, guys. What are we talking about today? What is going on with our education system? Are we really puzzled and bewildered why test scores are plummeting, dropping, uh, and I mean, we, I'm sure I've showed you what five, five different stories, five different scenarios of what's going on in public schools throughout the nation. And do you think it's going to get better? Uh, so this is unbelievable guys, but again, it's signs of the times. I know it's a little bit different today and our topics a little bit different. And I know this is probably a hot button and it's going to be a hot button for, for parents. I could tell you that and grandparents, but it should be because this is why, listen, if you're going to send your kids to public schools or schools in general, you better be pleading the blood of Jesus over them. You better be praying over them. You'd better be decreeing over them and you better be looking and examining what their curriculum is when they get it. Because again, I mean, this is the stuff that's becoming publicly known. What is happening that is privately done? That's the scary part. So again, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com, guys. Uh, that's going to be our main website. That's going to be our landing page. That's where you can go to find us. Please, if you've not downloaded our free app, you can do that at Apple. You could do that at Android. Uh, and if you're listening to my podcast, you can go into the uh, one, either the Apple or the Google Play Store, you can type in end time headlines, download that free app, get into your hands, push yes to push notifications. You're going to get all of our new, our latest podcasts where you can listen, where you can hear. <coughs> um, as always, we want you to do that. And as always, guys, if you uh, if this ministry is a continued source of blessing to you, it edifies you, it encourages you, it equips you on a weekly basis. Please uh, pray about becoming a monthly partner, and you can do that either electronically or you can do that by check or money order. If you wish to give electronically, you can do that by going to the, the app, uh, obviously by downloading that, going to the app and giving, or you can go to the main website and give through electronic giving, or you can go and you can give by uh, check or money, money order by making it out the end time headlines, P.O. Box 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 306. Five, five. And as always, guys, thank you so much for taking uh, the time today on this Tuesday to hop on here. Again, I want to say from the bottom of the heart for all of our listeners, all of our broadcasters, thank you so much. You will never know how much I covet, my family covets your prayers and your support during this time. Uh, again, we're we're in this, this battle um, and we're coming out of this thing. We're uh, I'm, you know, we're, I'm feeling better. It's of course we have the ups and downs and right now is a good, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, but you know, it's just a constant battle on this. We will constantly give you guys updates on our ministry, on our Facebook page and through these podcasts and so on and so forth. So we're going to sign off for today. Um, and we will be off tomorrow. Um, cause I, you know, I do want to use wisdom. I don't want to push this too much. So we'll take off on Wednesday. We'll be back on Thursday. I've got something lined up for Thursday that will a uh, topic of discussion that we'll talk about or an encouraging word. Uh, and then we'll pray about Friday and see what we got going on then. So until then, guys, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, and may his countenance be upon you in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.
Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.